Maintaining lawn can be costly and time consuming. The benefits of converting lawn to forest are many. They include shade, wind reduction, the creation or improvement of wildlife habitat, and better water quality. And of course, trees can also provide lumber, firewood, and fruit, and are aesthetically pleasing. To convert lawn to a forest, start by considering your objectives for your forest. What's most important to you? Is it timber and profit? great wildlife habitat, recreational opportunities, or something else. Check your soils. Matching the right tree species to your soil type can improve the survival rate of the trees that you plant. Web Soil Survey is a great free tool to find out what soil types you have on your property. You can also contact your county extension agent or DNR forester. Once you know the acreage and location of your tree planting site, you can consider the spacing of the trees and the number of seedlings you'll need. Plant seedlings 8 to 12 feet apart, leaving 8 to 12 feet between trees in a row. Here we have used flags for planting 10 feet apart. Using a larger spacing is cheaper and less work, but the canopy will take longer to close and the trees will tend to spread laterally. A smaller spacing requires more seedlings and labor, but will mean faster upward growth and canopy closure. Remember to allow enough space between rows for your mowing equipment. Planting in rows makes planting and maintenance much easier, but can detract from the natural appearance of the stand. On the other hand, a random planting pattern looks more natural, but may lead to unpredictable growth habits. Consider ordering 10 to 15% more seedlings than you think you will need. These extra seedlings can be stored and used later to replace seedlings that die. You'll want to use bare root seedlings. These seedlings are usually one to two feet tall and have no root ball, making them cheaper and easier to transplant. It's best to go to a forestry nursery for greater supply in a variety of native species. You want to order in the fall to get your desired species before they sell out. The species you choose to plant will depend on your objectives. For wildlife, consider a more diverse stand. The greater the diversity in the tree species, the more likely you are to have a greater diversity of wildlife species. For timber production, you may want one or two species. For aesthetics, consider flowering and berry producing species, such as dogwood, serviceberry, or pawpaw. You must prepare the site for planting. Use herbicides to kill perennial vegetation and turf grass two to three weeks before planting. Make three to four foot wide circles or strips where trees are to be planted. This is very important as established vegetation will outcompete seedlings for water and sometimes light and will make mowing difficult if it's allowed to continue growing. Plant seedlings as soon as possible after receiving them. Keep them cool, shaded, and moist. Do not store them in water as this may damage the roots. Do not freeze them and never leave them exposed to the sun or wind. If you do not anticipate planting seedlings right away, hold the seedlings using the healed in method. To heal trees in, make a V-shaped trench in moist soil. Open a bundle of seedlings, spread the roots out evenly along one side of the trench. Fill the trench with soil that is loose and fine, not clumped, and tamp it down for a firm covering. This will prevent air pockets, which could cause the roots to dry out. Be sure to water the healed in seedlings frequently until planted. Plant bare root seedlings in the early spring. Soak seedlings in water for two to four hours before planting, but not overnight. Always carry seedlings in a bucket half full of water or wet moss. Do not allow the seedling roots to become dry. Here is a planting bar or dibble bar. This is the quickest way to plant bare root seedlings. An inexperienced planter can plant 300 to 500 seedlings in a day. Hold the blade vertically and drive it into the soil for the full length of the blade. Pull the handle towards you four or five inches and then push the handle in the opposite direction. Remove the blade and insert the seedling. Shake out the roots so they point straight down in the hole. Plant the seedling to the root collar, which is where the roots meet the stem. Now drive the blade into the soil at a 30 degree angle, three inches behind the seedling, and as deep as the first cut. Pull the bar towards you and then push forward towards the seedling. This will close up the hole the seedling is in 
and prevent the soil and the roots from drying out. Deer can inflict major damage on your tree planting. Tree tubes are a somewhat effective tool for minimizing damage, but they do add significantly to the cost and labor of planting. A variety of tree tube models are available. Select one that is at least three feet tall and that has a perforated breakaway point for easy removal. Most models come with netting to prevent entry and nesting by birds and zip ties to secure them to the stake. After completing the planting process, install tree tubes by pounding the stake in next to the seedling, slipping the tube over the seedling, tying it to the stake, and then slipping the netting over the tube. Good maintenance is just as important as good planting technique. Keep livestock out of the plantings and reduce competition from weeds and grass by disking, mowing, hoeing, or spraying with herbicide. Fertilization is usually not necessary, but if you do use it, do not apply fertilizer directly to the roots. Now that you know how to plant bare root seedlings, you can start planting your new forest today. Plant today for tomorrow.